So hey there, guys. Uh, fun fact, this is actually the second time of me recording this audio, and for once, I know, the world is ending. It is an art topic video, and, and the artwork that I am talking about has to do with the topic at hand. It is the weirdest thing that has ever happened to my channel. This, this almost never happens, and I just I want to talk about it. So... We're going to talk about web comics today. Now, I need to get this right out of the way and right out of the gate before I get too far in the topic because I'm still trying to figure out the whole like self-advertisement thing. I know it's weird. I don't like really doing it, but with how YouTube is, I kind of have to. So, the Wash Your Damn Hands shirt and the Wash Your Hands shirt is still available in my Redbubble link down below. I also still have the GoFundMe for a new work computer. Obviously, you don't have to apply, uh, you know, apply for it in any way, but every little bit does help since I do do all of my work and all of my editing on a almost six-year-old laptop that is has been on its last leg for a few years now. So there's that. Uh, all of my social media links are in the description down below. I make new videos every Wednesday for sure. I try to throw an extra video, either a speed paint or something a little tiny extra during the week if I can. If not, definitely make sure that there is to come back on Wednesdays so my videos go live. And I have to say that because YouTube doesn't like telling people that the stuff is in their notification box. And if you're like me, and sometimes you don't know what to comment, and you don't know what to say, and you don't know what to, to you know, do sometimes, you want to help that stupid algorithm, sharing the video, liking, it does wonders. So, all right, there we go. My little ad is is done, hopefully, I hope. Anyway, so, let's just get into the topic of the video. So, a lot of people, which I'm very surprised by, I'm flattered, but surprised by, a lot of people tend to ask me what it is that like how what it is to be a webcomic artist and I always kind of have to tell them like I, I, I don't make webcomics I have I did a commission comic years ago but not a you know comic comic sort of thing uh and I've never actually made a professional web comic someday I, I do kind of want to but at the same time um if you're not new here I consider myself much more of a writer and an illustrator I'm still working on the illustration part you know to get more things done and that's not downplaying web comic artists in my opinion web comic web comic artists especially indie ones are one of if not the most you know, looked down upon, underpaid, and marginalized group of online artists out there. I'm saying online because the comic industry is very different, and I'm not going to be talking about that today. I will be talking about things here and there that I have heard from my friends who do work in that industry, but it's a very, very different ballpark than, you know, a single person doing everything on their own. So let's get into the picture for a minute, why don't we? So Aquaberry Arts on Twitter commissioned me for those same allergy pills that I needed. And bless you, bless you, Kira. You are an amazing bean. I've actually met Kira quite a few times. And uh, since she's moved back to California, we've been hanging out a little bit more. So she's slowly becoming like a really good friend of mine. I really like her. And so, you know, so also shout out there. But she commissioned me to draw her web comic character, Emmy, when she's older. And uh, after talking to me about a couple things, I really, really liked this character. I really like where the story is going to be going. And no, she did not pay me to promote her webcomic, but I'm going to be doing that because I am a, you know, slut for my friends. And it is, I believe, currently still on hiatus, but it's called Crystal Magic. It's on Webtoons. I'll have it linked down below as well as her social media, like mostly her Twitter, Instagram. But because, well, she commissioned me to draw her webcomic character, so technically it's fan art, but technically it's a commission. <laughs> and so, I know quite a few other people who are on Webtoons. I know, like, uh, my my uh, my buddy Dan, Dan Eckes, e Eckes, I can never say your last name right, man. I've done a couple of interviews on his channel. He has a webcomic on Webtoons. I know that, uh, Vexingly Yours, I don't believe they have it on Webtoons, but I know they have, like, their own website and stuff, and I've supported their comics, uh, I know Introducing Emmy has her own site. We're not friends, but I've been a fan of hers for years. And a couple of other things down there. 
that I give a lot of respect to for the web comic artists out there. Oh, and uh, my friend, uh, my friend Bezzy K here on YouTube, she's got Death Chicken, and I know uh, on her Patreon she's been talking about working on like a side little mini comic to get things done. But from what I've seen with comics, and well, obviously the Zodiac Lord, what can, what can I say without him? Um, and he is working on his. He is working on his. Uh, I, I'm becoming one of the flatters for it, as well as a few other people. But so that's fun. I like helping my friends out. But the thing with web comics that I've learned is that it is one of the hardest jobs out there. Most of the time, it is all one person doing everything for very, very little pay. What does that mean? Well, it's why you see a lot of people do Kickstarters and do things like that, because realistically, they could spend hours, if not days, on certain pages and spreads. And, you know people and this is something that's you can't exactly blame them if they don't understand because you know random fans of web comics some people just don't fully register how long it takes to make a comic because it's that it's that uh that weird balancing act of you know you have to make it affordable so more people will buy it but you have to make it affordable enough to where you warrant the work and oftentimes you will lose out on a lot of work it's why a lot of people don't tend to do web comics when they start out it's because you know um, unless you're really established and you can charge a lot for a page because a page can take you a long, long, long time. Most people aren't willing to pay that much for a mini comic or a zine or something along those lines. You know, what is the average comic sell at cons that I've seen? You know, anywhere between 15 and $20 for like a fat ish comic. If they're tinier zines, probably around like five to 10, you know, and it could take them a very, very long time to get that stuff done. So in the long run, you're trying to get your money back by publication, by making it more affordable, but by, by making it more affordable, you often have to take cuts. You have to do cheating things here and there. And it really bothers me when people try to compare indie artists to, you know, um, I, I don't want to say professional because it doesn't sound, that's not a, that's not the proper term. But industry, industry artists, that's a better way to put it. Because in my opinion, in some cases, you know, indie artists are a lot more professional than some uh, industry artists. Not all, but some. And so when you're an industry artist, you know, you have often in case, especially if you're one of the big guys, you can have up to like 20 to 60 people on a team, which is why they can pump out comics like crazy. You know, you have... Uh, people, you you know, you have people going nuts for like, okay, here's a sketcher, here's an inker, here's a flatter, here's a worder, here, or worder. Wow, worder, great grammar. Here's, you know, the person that does the wording and the bubbling and the formatting. You know, here's the person that does the shading, here's the person that does the final effects and stuff like that. You know, there are people out there who literally their entire job is, and my cat's being dumb, their entire job is just clean up. So they're not even inking or lining anything. They're just cleaning up messy line art or messy inks or messy things here and there. Swipe, slight tweaks, you know, and they're getting paid, paid really good job, really good, you know, fair wages for that in most cases, not all, but most. And so then go to an indie artist where they're doing everything. Okay. They're doing the writing, the formatting, the lettering, the coloring, the, 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 the blah, 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 everything out. They're doing all of that work and they're often not getting paid for it. Oh, if they are getting paid, they're getting paid very little. And it takes a long time to get your name established to be able to do such a thing. It's also why you tend to see more people often support Kickstarters for things that are already done. They're just trying to have it be published. You know, people are less likely because of some people in the past, you know, that are pretty famous on the internet who would take Kickstarter money and run, who wouldn't you know, they wouldn't, they didn't have the projects done. And then they were like, hey, help me fund this project. And then they would get it done. And then they would realize, oh crap, there's all these extra fees, all this extra stuff. It's why more people are more willing and likely to support Kickstarters and Indiegogos and things like that for projects that are done. It's made to just publish it, get physical copies, help it get out there, help people, you know, see eye to eye. And that kind of thing. And because of that, it takes a lot longer. It's a, and, and, and often cases, people want, it, it's a lot like YouTube. It is a lot like YouTube. People want high quality editing, high quality audio, high quality blah, 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 blah. But they don't want to pay for it. Well, then they have to get through other means. They have to get through AdSense. They have to get through Patreon. They have to get it through join buttons. Uh, you know, uh, PayPal donations. They, they, they. 
people oh <laughs> we live in a society where you can't really have your cake and eat it too i've always hated that saying but it's true you know and it's one of those things where you can't have this high tier thing here and there where it takes someone you know hours months years to get done and then bitch that it's taking too long when you don't want to pay for it you know when people have to hold jobs outside of their their you know their artistry when they have to hold jobs outside of their storytelling it's it's one of those things where it's like okay i can literally only do this in my off time and i can only do it with my free time because it's not making enough money to warrant working on it full time do people make it happen yes they do but i've also seen a lot of people even some of my friends who i love very dearly do very very unhealthy habits to make meet uh you know goals and deadlines they themselves have made and then they end up dealing with a dealing with a fallout they're dealing with issues to where they you know have to deal with a burnout and it's and then and then nothing happens and then they lose their fandom and they lose their fame because people have very short attention spans especially people who aren't artists and they just like the stories I know from personal experience when I was younger, when I was in high school and I didn't take art seriously at all, whenever a web comic I was watching would, or I was reading, would go on hiatus for long amounts of time, I'd kind of forget about it. You know, it isn't like how it is now. It, it's where, you know, or I'd pop back in a little while later and it's like, oh, there's only two pages left or there's only two pages updated when, you know, at the time, because I was, you know, a young little shit. I didn't consider what was going on in the artist's life. I didn't understand what was going on. Maybe they were moving. Maybe they had their electronic issues. Who knows? Now as an adult who is in an artistic industry, I understand that. But the random Joe doesn't. The random Joe just sees a story. It's a lot like books in that aspect, you know? And in most cases, it is like books. People look at manga and they'll look at a 300, 400 page manga for $15. And they see like in Japan, you know, the terrible working conditions that some manga, manga, mangika, if I'm saying it right, artists deal with to get stuff done in the deadlines is crazy. Oh, well, they're making a lot of money. It's like, yeah, but at the same time, their mental health isn't all that great. You know, so you need to find that weird balancing act. And you want to make sure that you really, really like the story that you're telling. A couple of things that I've learned that people have said, which is something I'm most likely going to do when I eventually do a webcomic. My main story and my main thing that I've been working on for years is Marked. Marked is my magnum opus. Ticks and Turns is a fun side project, but I have a couple of easier, smaller side things. I would kind of like to turn into webcomics someday. I have a whole little side uh, thing where you know, this would be an adult-ish comic. Just just keep that in mind. Uh, with the succubi characters that I have. You know, just like fun little like silly things of the week that could I could do with that. I have a, a kid's story that could be a fun little side thing like that. You know, they're still good fun stories, but they're not going to take so much of my time to where there are some artists I followed that have been working on a single comic for like 10 years and it's still not done. The product is amazing. The story is great. Everything looks wonderful. But they've been working on a project for 10 years. That's a long time to constantly be working on a project. And it sounds like mean to say, but it's one of those things where it's like, if that project isn't their magnum opus, isn't their child, well, that's going to really suck if once you finish it, you want to do other things, you know, because now a lot of time is gone. 10 years is a long, long chunk of time. And... It's, it's one of those things that's a little disheartening. It's like, oh, I've worked on this this comic for three years and someone can finish and read it in 30 minutes. It's, it's you know, it's it's a big thing there. We want to leave an impact, but we also need to think of our own health and things there. That's why I personally want to get my books done. That way I can get more books out. So if anything was to happen to me, people won't be left hanging. They can know how the story's in. They can know how this happens because... I've been a part of a lot of webcomic fandoms that that happened to. I was super duper excited. I was all in it. I, I bought merch. I was, oh, I was all for this. And then poof. It's gone one day. No, no word from him. We're, uh, worried, concerned. Yeah, but nothing. 
And then and then you find out a few years later, a couple of them, not all, again, I found came out, they just didn't want to do it anymore. And so it's kind of like, uh uh-huh, it kind of also sucks. And it makes people kind of skeptical when they've been burned before, you know? So a couple things that I've learned. I sound like I'm a broken record, but start off small for your first comic. Don't make it big. Don't make it this, like, large world high fantasy. Start off teeny tiny. Then build your way up. Get things done. Make sure you have your story completed in your head, unless they're silly one-off joke things. Like I said, where I, if I did that sweet succubus thing, that would be like a you know a kind of like slice of life joke of the week kind of thing. It wouldn't really have much of a plot. Um, I mean, it would, but it wouldn't. And so, because of that, you know, have it all out so you know beginning, middle to end. You know, some people don't need to. Some people can just write by the seat of their pants and be good. But I know most people who do do that often end up going to things they want to change they want to do things here and there you know they, they go through rewrites and studies and things like that and I like to think of back to my comic and my story when when I started marked because I, I do eventually someday I do want that to be a comic but that is going to be such a long book series I have no idea how I'd be able to do it as a comic unless it is something I did constantly for my job which it doesn't really pay for and I haven't ever done comics before so for something like that I I wouldn't want that to be my first comic because I want to get practice in and that's just the big thing is you have to practice and do not this is something I learned from introducing Emmy and I think it's one of the smartest things to do do not redo your first pages until you are ready to kickstart it when I was first watching introducing Emmy and in, in, in reading trying human when I was going through and seeing the art how drastic it was I believe from 2008 to when I got into it which was around like 2010 or so because it was I was right around when the first volume got kickstarted I don't remember when but she was already really 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 far along so what ended up happening was the artwork was really old, but I was able to breeze through it to get to, you know, the, the newer stuff. But when she was able to have a big enough buffer to where she was able to redo the old pages to match the newer pages and work on the newer, newer pages so they would still have an upload flow, when she had the book come out, the book was, you know, fully done. The book was very nice. It was very clean and cohesive, and it all matched and flowed. And she followed that on to the other Kickstarters was she only redid the pages and touched up the pages that didn't match with the current style to have it flow better. I think that's a really smart way to do things because that way, if you keep redoing your first pages and redoing your first things here and there, you're never going to get past the first chapter and then you're never going to get get it done and people are going to lose interest, which is kind of how the world works. So I hope that advice helps. I hope you guys enjoyed this art talk. I missed, missed these art topics. Uh, If you have an art topic, though, this is something I do want to ask because I've been getting a little, like, brain fried. If there is any kind of art topic you guys want me to touch on that I haven't done before, please comment down below and I will see if it'll be good enough to make it into an art video. I'm also working on a couple of other actual art-related videos, which is something I'm very excited for. I'm just not a thing when it has to come with time. So... As always, thank you for my Patreon patrons and my new patrons of this month. I love you all so much. Every little bit does help and go wonders. I love you all, and I will. See you guys next time. Bye.